Welcome to Buy, Hold, Sell. My name's Matthew Kidman and today we're talking casinos, in particular Crown and Star, Sydney versus Melbourne. Is it better to bet on the house rather than in the house? And I'm delighted to have Alex Leyland from Leyland Asset Management and Anton Tagliaferro from Investors Mutual to discuss the subject. Anton, let's start with something very broad. A casino is good to invest in because both of these stocks, Crown and Star, they haven't been star performers over a long period, even though they've had decent years. Good investments or not? I think they are, particularly in Australia, because Australia is one of the few countries in the world, in fact, the only country in the world which is allowed to have big casino complexes in the middle of CBDs, you know, which underpins a very solid growing market. So yes, I think they are good. They, they uh, The growing population of Sydney and Melbourne, the, the Asian population growing, it's got a lot of uh, pluses uh, for the sector. Okay, Alex. Great regulated assets, Crown, as Anton said, sits in the middle, right on the Yarrow there and Star here in Piermont. Regulated assets, is that also a negative for them? Do you think that works against them in the long run? I mean, they do have a strong market position, so they do need that regulation around them. Uh, but they've just got that really defensive earning stream. So, you know, pe people gamble. Um, it's like alcohol and tobacco. So uh, as far as the investment thesis goes, c casinos are a terrific investment as long as you're not uh, running an ethical fund. Okay, we're in love with casinos, that is we like investing in the shares. Tell us what we should look for when we're assessing a casino stock. Oh well obviously you just have a look at the assets. So Crown for instance got the, got the Melbourne asset, that's really you know their, their key driver of earnings. Um, and then yeah and then just sort of work out how that extrapolates out and so where the population is etc. Um, but obviously valuation is, is key and both Crown and Star trade above 20 times earnings. So I just think on a valuation basis, they're probably a bit expensive, but, but very resilient businesses. Okay, Anton, let's get down to the actual two, two stocks we're talking about here. Mm -hmm. Crown hasn't done much for five years, had a good year in share price terms. Star has been quite good over the last year as well. Which one do you prefer and why out of the two? Okay, so look, uh, we like Crown. In fact, we've been buying them recently. Uh, why do we like Crown? Well, they've already said they're going to pay 60 cents a share dividend for the next three years while they build Barangaroo. So mm -hmm. that's a at below $12, that's on the yield of over five, you know, sustainable from cash flow. Um, the other thing about Crown, you know, they went on this multiple expansion across the world. They went to Macau, they bought assets in Las Vegas. Uh, they've cut all that back. Uh, so now basically when you buy Crown, you buy Burswood, you know, Casino, which they've spent a lot of money fixing the last few years. You buy Cr uh, Crown in Melbourne, which is ex capex, and you buy this option in Barangaroo. And, and Crown is basically debt free. Uh, they're going to sell the Las Vegas land for, you know, three, four, five hundred million. So they'll, they'll actually have surplus cash. Uh, they're, they're selling their golf course at Ellerton here in Sydney as well. That's another 50 or 60 million. Um, so, yeah, look, it's, it's a debt free company. It's gearing up for Barangaroo, which will cost them 2.2 billion. But they're hoping to get seven or eight hundred million from the apartments. Uh, so you look, you'll, you'll end up with a Casino in Sydney, a casino in Melbourne, a casino in Perth, which Perfect. is not too bad. It's not a bad triangle to have. But you just mentioned something there, Crown in Melbourne, gone or, or Perth and or gone ex capex. Is that when you is the best time to invest? Well, in, in, yes, it is. Because they require I mean, capex, don't they? They did, and, and to be honest, Crown probably overspent on Burswood and, and Melbourne. You know, when the high roller market was doing particularly well. Um, so look, they've they've spent the capex on those things. I think the the go forward capex now. Uh, they're talking something like 80 million a year, which is nothing. Uh, and, and so Crown's in this position where their key assets, uh, um, Melbourne and, and Perth, are going to generate all this cash. They're going to use that cash in the short term to fund the 60 cent dividend and build Barangaroo. Uh, but by 2020, 2021, you know, they'll have three, <laughs> three great done assets. casinos, great assets and no sort of okay. uh, commitments. Okay, Alex, 80 million might be nothing to uh, Anton and the casinos. It's a, it's a fair bit of money, but yep. that's right. It's not a lot of money to keep those casinos rolling. But you made the really good point. Both are trading at 20 plus times. Are you prepared to pick one out of the two or did you stay out altogether? Well, I, I think if you look at the, the quality of the assets there, then, then Crown's obviously um, you, you know, gonna win that race. Um, and they've returned a billion dollars to investors this year, but just, just mainly by way of a share buyback. So uh, yeah, out of those two, Crown's probably and um, what, what do you think stars just run too hard this year? Uh, yeah, look, it's just... It's, I, I just or think, extra competition coming? Yeah, well, there's extra competition obviously coming into the Sydney market. They've also got their, their Brisbane and Gold Coast assets as well. But I just think, look, I think both of them look relatively expensive. Um, but if I had to choose one, it would be Crown. There you go. Get down to Melbourne, go to Perth, even bide your time and go to Sydney and put a chip on Crown.